Yep, it's winter, it's 3am, and I've just endured Manchester Airport security, which at the best of times is hard work. A word of helpful advice is if you're flying from Manchester in 2022, you really should aim to get to the airport five to six hours before your flight. Manchester security is always understaffed, but the problem is particularly acute right now, and I expect it to remain so until at least the end of the year. But today is all about Ryanair, an airline that people love to hate, but that most have never experienced. Today's flight down to Tenerife for nearly four and a half hours is my longest flight ever with Ryanair, but I've booked and paid for everything that I can think of to make the journey just that much better. Even Ryanair CEO Michael O'Leary made me this very generous offer. I will personally come up to the boarding gate and kiss your bum as well as you depart, yeah? Well, that's a super nice gesture, Michael, but not my thing at this early hour, which leads me nicely into my Starbucks breakfast. Sausages in a bun, if that's what you can call these rather diddly things, and yours for just £5.80. I've given up trying to get into the priority pass lounges here at Manchester, and in fact, in future flights, I'll be trying out both Birmingham and East Midlands airports. Birmingham in particular, as you can book guaranteed access to their lounges with priority pass, which you can't here at Manchester. And as you all know, I do love an airport lounge. A handy tip if you're flying from Terminal 1 is that the central area can become very crowded and hot. You can walk to and from quieter parts of the terminal quite freely and few people realise this. It's a lot quieter and cooler. Useful with the summer coming on. Before boarding, there's just time to say a huge thanks to James, Joe, Kieran and all of my other Patreon supporters who make bringing these videos to you possible. Thanks to you all. With boarding starting 30 minutes before scheduled departure and priority boarding strictly enforced at the gate, so far, so good. A quick photo as I'm amongst the first to board and I'm then sat in my extra legroom seat. Today's flight down to Tenerife South Airport will take us four hours and 24 minutes. It's on a three-year-old Boeing 737-800 series aircraft and will reach a maximum altitude of 37,000 feet. Soon after takeoff, and this is the good bit, as I had prepaid for a breakfast deal, the crew come around and ask me to choose what I'd like from the menu. Paying in advance saves you the sum of one pound, but you also get first choice of the menu options, so it's highly unlikely they won't have what you want. Stock on board is something that Ryanair is particularly good at. In fact, the best of all the airlines that I fly with to the Canary Islands. Today's breakfast deal cost me £9, and I chose a tea, Kit Kat, and ham and cheese panini. The panini was nothing special, but airline food is really great these days, on any airline. Soon after breakfast, the Olympic toilet using squad forms a 10 deep queue, so I decide to let that die down a bit, and tell you some information about Ryanair. Founded in 1984 by Tony Ryan, from humble beginnings flying the Embraer 110, between Waterford, Ireland and Gatwick, United Kingdom, it wasn't until the arrival of straight-talking, dynamic young CEO Michael O'Leary that the airline was transformed from a low-cost, loss-making venture into one of Europe's largest airlines. With strong views on just about everything, he is the man himself with one of his most terrible ideas yet. We have this uh, dream that, you know, we take out, say, a third of the seats at the back of the aircraft and put a standing uh, room-only cabin into it with handrails. But and I think, you know, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, all of those would be free. On Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays and Mondays, uh, we'd guarantee you that the fare to stand would be a fiver. Today, though, with a fleet of nearly 500 modern jets, mostly 737s, Ryanair has blitzed its way through Europe with its ultra-low-cost model, savagely undercutting other airlines' prices. But not content with standing class, here's more inspirational ideas from the great leader. We have three toilets on board our aircraft. We have 189 passengers. The average sector of the set line is about one hour, 15 minutes. If we could get rid of two of the three toilets, we could put in six extra seats onto the aircraft. Six extra seats would allow us to drop the average fare by 4% for every passenger on board. But we need fewer people queuing to go to the toilet. How do you get fewer people queuing to go to the toilet? Charge them for it. And then you will all go in the terminal before they depart and they'll all wait until then go in the terminal. So, uh, welcome to what is possibly the uh, smallest toilet cubicle in the world. Um, but yeah, uh, so far so good. Uh, Ryanair, 727, uh, 
it's a while since I've flown on one. Um, usually they're all Airbuses these days that I fly on, so it's a bit of a novelty actually. Series 800, uh, this one's three years old, feels really modern. And so far, I can't fault it for what I've paid, and we'll cover the costs later in the video. Um, the meal that I ordered, they had on board. I'm uh, very impressed with that actually, because if you order in advance, not only is it cheaper, but as soon as the aircraft takes off and the seatbelt light goes off, they come down and give you priority uh, access to whatever you want. So you pay your money in advance and then you just choose from the menu. Uh, there's a range of choices included with your meal deal. Um, that's really good because on next week's video, when you see the other airline, not Ryanair, uh, you'll see how not to do it. So um, yeah, let's have a quick look around toilet cam uh, as usual. Uh, couldn't do a flight without it, but so far, seriously impressed. I mean, Ryanair really is the airline that people love to hate, but based on this morning's flight, can't fault it. So far, so good. With a Trustpilot rating of just 1.3 out of 5, I wanted to understand what was at the root cause of passenger frustration with Ryanair. What I found was quite unexpected. It is true to say that airports in the UK are generally unable to cope with the significant new demand created over the last 20 years since the arrival of low-cost airlines, which simply have enabled more people to be able to afford to fly. But reading some of these comments, it's clear that frustration with the airport experience is directed at Ryanair which is odd when you think about it, as the airports aren't actually owned by Ryanair. Indeed, one of the first questions I ask when someone says to me, oh, I would never fly Ryanair, is, tell me about your own personal experience with Ryanair. What was it that made you feel that way? And nine times out of 10, the answer will come back. Well, I've never actually flown with them myself. It's just that, well, my neighbor's aunt's son's wife, well, well her cat flew with them in 1986, and his flight was delayed by an hour, and then Ryanair closed the airport. You hear all this nonsense, I've heard it myself. Ryanair really is just the airline that people love to hate. Doubtless, there are people out there who will have had a bad experience with Ryanair. Me personally, yeah, sure, Ryanair have bailed on me twice with last minute cancellations in the middle of Sweden, but so have British Airways and Air France. No airline is perfect, but Ryanair is no worse than anyone else, in my experience. But Ryanair tries to trick you into buying extras that you don't really need or want. Well, let's see how true that is. I book using the Ryanair app. Let's book my next flight to Tenerife. Step one, tell the app where you want to fly. Step two, tell the app when you want to fly. Step three, pick your flight from just 14.99. Step four, choose your fare type. And then in step five, will choose any optional extras. Step six, review what you want and pay. Now I didn't see any pitfalls there, so let's now see what I actually paid on today's flight. With a base fare of £14.99, plus an extra legroom seat, priority boarding and a breakfast deal, I paid £57.99 one way. For comparison, my average EasyJet fare on this exact route is £107, Jet2 is usually around £150, and TUI stands out as the worst value at £207 on average. We'll feature TUI on the 767 in next week's video. So as we come towards the end of today's brief look at Ryanair on board my flight down to the Canary Islands, I'll leave you with the new Ryanair on time jingle and a preview of next week's flight with TUI on board the Boeing 767. Till then friends, I bid you all happy flying. Thank you for flying Ryanair. Last year, over 90% of our flights arrived on time. We hope you enjoyed yours and we look forward to welcoming you on board again soon. Ryanair, low fares, made simple.
afraid I have some bad news for you. So, uh, I'll get straight to the point. So I'm going to declare this the worst flight I've been on in my adult life. 